$50 cab ride away from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go, and it should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off. And a nice return sets them up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line with the Denver Broncos. And Denver getting set to take the field. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now the first carry here for Philip Lindsay. And an early how do you do right there as they're going to bury him in the backfield. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers putting up their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. He was looking for Tim Patrick that time, and it's third down. Anytime a ball is thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Locke working out of the gun. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time, he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Sam. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. The Jets have Braxton Berrios back deep. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. Back onto the field here come the New York Jets. You look back to their week one game, a loss against Buffalo in Buffalo. Remember, this is a Jets team that started one and seven last year. Not a whole lot expected this season. And they were really undone by a rough start in that game at Buffalo. Three straight, three and outs to begin the season. They fell down 21 to nothing in the first half. Never really recovered. And CD, obviously not great news. Le'Veon Bell pulling up with a hamstring injury. That's not going to help you. Not at all. And then you go back to the preseason camp where Le'Veon Bell was talking about getting more work during practice when they were trying to limit him. It's just so difficult for them right now because he's one of the better players in the league when he's on top of his game and it changes what you do with your offense. Now Sam Darnold, the young quarterback, that's one less guy that he can count on to try and elevate this team. But boy, they got jumped on early. They got to have a big effort trying to bounce back and give some hope to the people who love Gang Green. And they'll be trying to do that against an angry 49ers team as the NFC champions will be traveling to New York this coming week. First down, Darnold. Caught here by Griffin. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Oh, not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now off the bootleg, Darnold. Herndon's got it complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. The tackle made by when you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. 
looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jamison Crowder there, and that takes us from second to third down. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Now Darnold. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. The Jets field goal, a 51-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this will remain a scoreless game. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. Oh, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do and he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. To Tim, Tim Patrick, Patrick 59 yards. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. And sometimes those slants, they can be so tough to defend Brandon after the McMahon catch. It, it, it just happens so quickly. And really what gets set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone. Footing always a concern, but the extra point's up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Back on the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Second and 10. The shotgun snap for Darnold. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. Flushed out right. He'll have a first down past the 40 as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. I'm not sure he falls under the category of mobile quarterback, but he's athletic enough that if you don't keep your rush lanes intact, he finds a way to hurt you. As coaches like to say, I wouldn't call him a burner, but enough there in the tank. 
And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Run there by Frank Gore, and he has to be one of the most admired players in the NFL. Started the 2020 season, number three all-time on the rushing list. Less than 1,400 yards shy of Walter Payton as the season kicked off. Spent a year with Coach Adam Gase in Miami. Now he's hooked back up with him again with the New York Jets. Four the ball carrier. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Someone's looking fresh, and this old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They run with Gore out of the shotgun, and he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. On first down, it's Gore. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. A gain of two. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Check, 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 check. Now on second down, this is Gore. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Brought down at the 20 yard line. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. That's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties, and he's able to knock that one away. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, this from 37. Ficken's kick is good. But wait up now, a flag is down. If this is on the defense, they're going to get the first. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So first and 10 after a big mistake on fourth down with a penalty. Here's Darnold. They go with the screen to Gore. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Gore from 10 yards out. And the Jets are an extra point away from tying this thing up. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. To return it, here's Deontay Spencer. 
And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Cortland Sutton, first-time Pro Bowler. He was the intended target, but it's going to be second down. Second and 10 now from the 27. To throw again. Lock. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. Brought down back at the 21-yard line. Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. From the gun, it's Locke. And the throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. It's fourth down. Here's Sam Martin now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and possession will switch hands first and 10. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at the 34. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And he'll get this up to about the 40. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. On the handoff, it's Gore. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. It's now third and That time on the outside, pretty nice job as a cornerback to shed any would-be blockers and make the tackle. And think about the praise we're giving him, what his coaches are giving him, but how about the respect he gets from his teammates to be a complete corner who doesn't just cover receivers, but also tackles ball carriers. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. Demarcus Walker in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. On fourth down, rookie Braden Mann will punt for the Jets. Denver has Deontay Spencer deep to return. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Lock now on first down. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. And he takes us up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Noah Fant was a first-round pick in 2019, and he was picked because of his receiving skills. Had 40 catches in his rookie season for 562 yards. Did have two games where he topped 100 yards in each of those. Yes, he's still developing as a blocker, but that's not why he went in the first round. He went there for his ability to make big plays down the field. He was going for the tight end, Nick Vanette. That'll bring up second down. Line. 
Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And a very similar result again. The Jets' defense once more stopping him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make it third and 13. Shotgun snap to lock. And that is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Denver. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And that will come the offense as they take over. New York ready to go again offensively. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't right turn here. it over. Right? You're giving it, you're giving your defense a... Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And they will finally bring this run back to an end, but not before he's down inside the five-yard line at the four. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Leads to Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. One man in the backfield. That's Gordon. Second and goal. Block now to throw. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that is going to set up third and goal. That's the end of the first quarter. These two teams all tied after one. to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. They look to throw. It's Locke. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Broncos have taken the lead. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where would you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away from the 10. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. And New York set to take the field. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. 
And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. All right, this gives us a chance, Charles, to go back to your playoff predictions. We covered the AFC. What do you see happening in the NFC? All right, let's go with the division winners. Dallas in the east, Green Bay in the north. Let's see, New Orleans in the south, and out west, San Francisco. Wild cards, I think two are coming out, come from out west. Arizona and Seattle. And the third wild card, I think it's gonna come from the south, and Tampa Bay gets in. Now, I don't believe Tampa Bay's going to the Super Bowl. I think New Orleans and Seattle will slug it out for the Super Bowl champs and I'm going with New Orleans to find their way in. Okay, so you got the veteran breeze against Lamar Jackson in the Super Bowl, and who ultimately do you have winning that one, CD? Oh, yeah, the old head and the kid, right? I'm going with the kid in this one in a Super Bowl classic. Baltimore wins the championship. All right, just so I go on record, I mentioned I'll take the Chiefs, and I'm going to take them over the Packers. So I think we'll have another young and old QB mix. Packers, a little bit of a surprise getting in there, and I'll take Mahomes with a repeat title. I love it, a rematch of Super Bowl one, which was called the NFL-AFL championship game, actually the world championship game when they played it back in 19. 1967. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Right at the line. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Second and ten. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, if you're up five, whatever you... Gore hit. He lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. So they need to determine if that knee was down before the ball was coughed up. And they also wanted to make sure that the ball was possessed as they were going through, that the ball wasn't working its way free before the knee hit the ground. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And yeah, brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. A gain of five. First down, New York. First and ten. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. He's going to air it out deep for Hogan. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. All right, I need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Here's Gore now running out of the gun. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. The Jets on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and five. Darnold from the gun. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. I have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. Sam Ficken for the Jets' field goal. A 44-yard attempt. Ficken's kick is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So he gets a shot at atoning for the earlier miss here in the first half and able to knock it through. And what a relief for him, don't you think? Because how many games have we done where kickers missed one early and never got a chance to atone for it the rest of the game? That's a lot to carry around.
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. On the return is Spencer. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Denver's offense ready to go again. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? He said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Steve McClendon, credit him for the sack. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to have to put a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> the throw taken in by Hamilton. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. The Broncos on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and 15 from the gun. Block. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. And yeah, that will be incomplete. And thus far, they've been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Denver. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> were happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Second and 11. They'll toss it left to Gore. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. A nice toss play there to the left. More than enough room to move the chains. And you know what I love about that play as a broadcaster? Seeing the big guys move. Seeing them get upfield and take out defenders. You know what I hated as a defensive back? What? That exact same thing. <laughs> Seeing those linemen coming downfield, getting ready to blot out the sun. He's going to look deep for Perriman. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now a handoff for Gore. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. He's brought down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. The Jets on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and four. Now it's Darnold. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So on fourth down, the Jets turn to kicker Sam Ficken. This from 54 yards away. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. 
Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick, but let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. We know Melvin Gordon is very effective getting to the perimeter, but being a former University of Wisconsin Badger means you know how to run the ball inside and with power as well. I also like the fact that he's a weapon in the passing game. Had as many as 58 catches in a season. Throw it to him in space and look out. They go back to Gordon here on first down. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. It's a pick and that looked six. like some pretty easy Three yardage six. there right up the gut. And he's a guy that That's has some height to him. So line. when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. From the 39, Locke throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for the rookie Jerry Judy there. And it's third and four. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. From the gun on third down, Locke. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Wreaking havoc was Nathan Shepard, the D-tackle. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to skid in the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. And here now the putter, Martin, booming this one away. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. New York ready to go again offensively. And yeah, they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. To throw is Darnold. And he's going to find Hogan here, complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now another carry here tonight for Gore. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. They run. It's Gore. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. He was brought down. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage. And we're still in the second quarter. The Jets on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. Here it's third and three. Back to throw, Darnold. That is caught. It's Perriman. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Darnold finding Perriman there for a New York first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Now Gore. 
And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The last run got six. Now second and four. Here's Gore. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. That's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. Darnold, he's got this one complete to Perriman. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. First, well, that'll get him the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. First down, it's Darnold. Looking for Perriman there, he's got him. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Completion there to Bashad Perriman, and the best part of his game come out of UCF is his ability to run. A sub-4-4 sprinter. They need him now in New York to replace Speedster Robbie Anderson who signed with Carolina. He's gonna take over the outside vertical routes that Anderson provided, and they're hoping for big plays downfield. And open here is Hogan. He's got it. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 16. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Darnold on first down. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing again is Darnold. That's complete right around the eight. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. To the air again, Darnold. No, oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They'll run it with Gore. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Lock now on first down. This is the tight end fan. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And Denver getting set to take the field. You're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you've got the lead. It's a, definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are in the field. 
got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at HR wondering what if. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Lock working out of the gun. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Terrell Basham. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. So we reach halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And New York set to take the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Johnson. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Well, stick to the ground game with Gore. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. He finds his target, it's Crowder. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That third down conversion, good for 23. Catch there by Jamison Crowder. 78 catches, 833 yards, and six touchdowns in 2019. Operates very well out of the slot. One of the niftier receivers in the league. A first down throw, Darnold. Herndon's got it complete. That catch good for only a couple. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? And they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a blown coverage. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Darnold completes it, and he's taken down inside the 30. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just, I, they move. And they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. From the 25, here's second and six. Another carry now for Gore. And he'll be down close to the first down marker as he gets this to the Broncos' 19-yard line. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. 
On third down, they'll run with Gore. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. It's a gain of seven. First down, New York. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now a delayed give to Gore. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. From the seven, it's second and five. Gore. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. He was brought down by... Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed him down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Darnold will throw it on third and one. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. From four yards out. And the Jets are going to retake the lead. And he had time there. I mean, you give any quarterback that length of time, he'll make you pay. It just puts way too much stress on guys trying to cover downfield. Because, as you said, you not much time in the pocket. He can scan the field, find the open person. That's exactly what happened there. And what was the end result again? Touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now 17-14. 14. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. On the return is Spencer. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. From the 41, Locke. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions. And here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield. He was standing in the pocket. But just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. These guys have punted four times already. And they're staring at a fifth. Barring a conversion here on third down. They'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Quinnen Williams, his second sack of the night. Oh, man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. And here comes Berrios. 
35 yards that time on the punt. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now. First and 10 at the 34. Throw right side to Perriman, and it's caught. A gain of six there on first. Perriman gets a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 40-yard line. Second down at four. Now it's Gore. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. On first and ten, Darnold. Throw complete to Herndon. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Normally you think the tight end's gonna be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Darnold now to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The former Bill, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. And it's third down. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Again, Darnold. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That ball was tipped in the air, and while it ultimately fell incomplete, it caused a few anxious moments for the guy slinging it, who's had quite a day. He knows how to get it into the end zone. He's throwing it really, really well. And maybe Lady Luck is on his side because he avoided his first interception of the contest. Oh, it's a wobbler here. Officially just 27 yards there on the punt. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Neville Hewitt on the stop. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stumped that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game, second and ten. In trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone, loose. And this will be gathered up in the end zone. And that's a defensive touchdown. Yes. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Ficken for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Makes the score Jets 24, Broncos 14.
And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. On the return is Spencer. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they've got to be still reeling from the events of a moment ago. What a turn on that last play. You're knocking on the door. You're about to take it in. You think you're going to get some points on the board. Instead, you cough it up and watch them take it the rest of the way to the opposite end zone. That's a two-score swing that you just gave up. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, there's a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. Deep ball, short ball, that was a deep one there. They're making plays on the football, contesting everything. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Steve McClendon able to drop in that time for his second sack of the evening. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. So third and long now for Locke and the Broncos following the sack. He's got his tight end fan. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle. But they allow the conversion. Now Gordon on first down. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Gordon, the ball carrier. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Three yards to go on second down, and they've got three tight ends out there. Jumbo set. Fakes the give to Gordon. Now here's Locke to throw. And it's hauled in by Nick Vanette. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Four yards the pick up, first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. They'll run on first down. It's Gordon. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. He was brought down by... No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But, boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now a tenth carry for Melvin Gordon. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. And they'll run the end around here with Judy. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. He was Jordan Jenkins there on the tackle. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. Second down and seven. Lock going to hand it off here to Gordon. 
And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. The Broncos on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This will be third and six. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. 29-yard attempt. And McManus able to put it through. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. McManus to kick it away. Takes it at the seven. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at about the 32. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Stop through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Again, they run. Again, it's Gore. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Four yards the pick up. First down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage. Work on that clock. See if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football. Gain some yardage and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he ran right through one tackle as he fights forward for a gain of seven. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And that's caught. It's Hogan. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 31-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Gore now, running out of the gun. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Now second and 11 from the 32. They'll keep it on the ground. Gore works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Gore, the ball carrier. You've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Here's Darnold. 
And this is going to be incomplete. Intended By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And that hits the right upright and caroms away. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So this defense gets an assist from the goalpost, and as a result, it's going to keep them within one score. Yeah, and that looked to be good the whole way. But that is a big break here in the fourth quarter of a football game. Now your offense needs to find a way to capitalize. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Philip Lindsay there. And it's second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 15 yards on the play, first down. Nice catch there by the rookie out of Alabama, Jerry Judy, and I am fired up to see the chemistry develop between he and Drew Locke, their quarterback, and in addition, Cortland Sutton, their Pro Bowl wide receiver from last year. This might be the best pair of receivers the Broncos have had. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Quinnen Williams bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Throwing on second and long. Lock. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best. and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And that is incomplete. Incomplete on the throwaway. It's now fourth down. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Denver. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Jets take over now, if you're a fan ten. of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. A couple of Broncos there in on the tackle. A tight game like this. Such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take. And Arnold, he lost the football. The Broncos say they have it. They do. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. On first down, Gordon. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. On 
second and seven. Lock. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Quinnen Williams make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That'll be good for six, but now it's fourth down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. A 32-yard attempt. The kick by McManus is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the air. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. McManus to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. New York ready to go again offensively. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. On first down, it's Gore. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. On first down, Darnold. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession. So they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. From the gun on third down, here's Darnold. A dump off here for Gore. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This from 44 yards away. Ficken's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. 
And from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. On the return is Spencer. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now Drew Locke in the Broncos. Down 27-20, a minute 50 to play. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. Check down to Lindsey. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Lindsay. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Down, that gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw. That one into the hands of Hamilton. Three yards the game there, second down. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. So third and long now for Locke and the Broncos following the sack. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. Two huge plays there down the stretch. The sack on second down. Now they force the incompletion. That's going to lead to a do or die fourth down. And they look like they've got the confidence right now that no matter what gets thrown against them, whatever play gets run, they have the ability to shut it down. They're just brimming with it right now. They'll go for it. It's Locke. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Jets are going to get the football here in great field position. Turnover on down. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. Now a handoff for Gore. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The New York set to take the field. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. The Jets with victory seemingly in hand. They take a knee. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The Jets with victory seemingly in hand. They take the knee. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. 
but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Tonight. So it's a victory here for the New York Jets. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this... You know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the things that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Jets as we say so long from MetLife Stadium.